All right, so we're very close to finishing this. We want simple filled shapes. So all I'm missing is a tail and then the big triangle behind it. The big triangle behind it that you see in my sketch, that's gonna help set it all off so it's visible from a distance. And what do we need? Let's see, to do the tail, I'm just gonna use my move which is also my auto select layer tool. And I'm just gonna choose one of these whiskers, duplicate it, Command J, double click within the layer preview window to color it. I'm gonna make it the yellow. Even though my cat's black and white, we're doing yellow and white for this so far. And now I've got this tiny little tail, that's no good. So I wanna to go to edit, free transform, and I'm just gonna scale it up. And because these are vectors, and I can shorten it and scale it up, because these are vectors, they will always be perfectly clean, no matter how big or small you make them. That is why we want to keep them as vector shapes. So if I want to curve this more, I'm going to use warp, right click inside the transform box. And then just curl it around kind of tuck it in. That might have been pushing this shape a little bit too much, but yeah, let's go Command Z and try again. Option Command T. Let's just tilt it, not overthink it, make it bigger. Push it up and out. All right, so now I've got a tail. keep working on just the flow of that tail just a little bit. There we go. That flows a little bit better. And now I just need the big triangle behind it. And I have a little eyebrow there. Maybe I can add that. So big triangle, what do I do? Underneath my sketch, make a parametric shape. I'm almost always using a three-cornered triangle for this. I haven't found much use for the other flat-sided shapes yet. Move to my Move tool, kind of move it in, and then Option-Command-T for Free Transform, which also allows you to move it. Kind of get the angle right. Try to complement the shapes I already have. Keep it equilateral. Yeah, so maybe like that. Hit return. Find a good color for it. I'm thinking, because I have yellows and pinks and whites, I'm thinking very 80s, very Saved by the Bell, kind of a cyan light aqua blue, and then move that with Command left bracket all the way behind. Okay, now, turn off my sketch. These are my shapes, right? And it communicates my intention. So this is done. Do I want that eyebrow? Yeah, that eyebrow is fun. So I got to do the eyebrow. So I'm just going to show you really quick. This is how you can do a half circle really easily, if you know what you're doing, based on what you have, or a half arch. I'm gonna do an ellipse. I'm going to do, just trans use the basic tools to angle it where I want it, and shrink it where I want it, and I can use my sketch to help. So I'm gonna move it down a little, move tool. Then, Free transform, option command T. And now I'm just gonna option command T, warp it, and I'm gonna tuck this lower half up into the upper half. So it becomes a, a kind of a kidney bean shape. 
Now it's hard to get a clean straight edge doing that, but I'll show you what you do then. So then I'm just gonna shrink it a little bit, put it in place, tilt it a little, get it right there. And then maybe just warp it, tuck this edge up a little bit, a little asymmetrical. Okay, now to get that clean edge, what do I need? I just need a rectangle tool as a mask, right? That I fill with the yellow color of the cat. And then I transform that, free transform, option command T, just like so. And then that will disappear into the eyebrow. Okay, now I am done. So I save, Command S. That will save my PSD. Make sure I know where that is. It's right here. Look at that lovely little graphic shape emoji. This is my yellow one. I'm still working on it, right? That's my PSD format. Now I need the format that's going to go up onto Canvas. So I'm going to say File, Export as, this time a PNG. But before I do that, I make sure all my raster layers, all my sketch layers are turned off above and below. Even if I think they look cool, even if I like that little drop shadow, I'm going to show you those kind of effects later. But I turn them off now so I just have the, the empty grid behind. And then I export it as a PNG. It's going to go to Downloads. I'm going to move it from Downloads into my folder or onto my desktop. Just keeping it organized into your exercise too. And it looks just like my PSD, except it ends with PNG. And remember, PNG is an online format that supports transparency. So when I open it up in preview, it will have a, a middle gray background. So you're not doing a JPEG, because a JPEG would give you a white background. And we want it to be a floating shape. And now to meet the requirements of the exercise, I post the little sketch that I got from the website. Optional. I don't know what that that is. I think there's a space shuttle launch going on next door. So optional inspiration reference. And then I'm actually going to post not my PSD, but my PNG, and shrink it so it doesn't look too huge. Remember, emojis are meant to be a modest size, even though these vector graphics can be scaled to any size. So kind of fit them under your name. There we go. And then you're not done until you hit the blue button at the bottom. In this case, because I'm editing my previous post, it says save instead of reply. So I have just done what are called the flat graphic. Now, now I can go in, only now I've met all the requirements for the bonus finishing extras, I'm going to turn it into flat 2.0. Which is actually very easy to do. What we do, and I'm just going to show you with some simple things, is we take our shapes from our PSD, like this triangle, and we can do different things to it. So if we double click, not in the layer preview window where we change the color, but next to the name of it, but not on the name of it, <laughs> you get to what are called the layer styles. Layer styles are the effects we can do to that vector shape without losing any quality. So a very common one is to add a gradient. So you'll see the gradient overlay option. You click that and then you can see these settings and this gives you a lot to play with. So a simple gradient is just a fade from white to black through gray but you can set the angle of it. This is a 90 degree angle. That seems to work okay. I can reverse it. So it's dark on top, light on the bottom. I can change its scale, like how subtle, how strong it is. And I can even change, you know, what that gradient is. I can add colors to it. I can do different versions of gradients. So if I want that kind of 80s look, I might kind of speckle it and do it at a different angle, like that, and then actually give it some, 
some noise by changing it to dissolve as a blending mode. Doesn't that look 80s? Now I just need like little disco flex around it. So that's a layer style. Another layer style you can play with that I like, double click again, is a stroke. Now a stroke is very helpful for vectors. You can see the stroke as one of the vector shape properties, but when you're using it this way as an effect, it's actually more effective to do it as a layer style, even though this is also a vector. And a stroke has more options this way. I'm going to just use it for as black right now. I can grow a shape outside of the triangle or inside of the triangle or in the center, split the difference. And you see how it kind of rounds it off a little bit as I do that. I can make it as thick as I want and I can make it any color I want. So to really set off the cat, maybe I make this, let's see, what would be good? Maybe a darker blue. Not an electric blue, like a Prussian blue. There we go. And then let's give that some lower opacity. Oh, no, I'll keep it at 100%. But let's make it a little bit lighter. So you, you can play with these features. And then what's so nice about them is they can be turned off at any time. You can see them as effects with a drop down menu on the layer. And you can turn off one or both at any time. Or you can turn them all off. Remember that blue line is just showing us the path around the vector shape. So if I want to change the angle of that gradient so more of it got here, I would just double click here, go to that gradient, and then just play with the angle. And it will change it in real time. So these layer styles are a great thing to use on vector shapes. They're always perfectly clean. Now what if I want to do a gradient let's see, on the cheeks and on the belly. Well, what I can do is select multiple layers, holding down command. Yeah, I don't know what that's from. It must be from the construction, so I wouldn't worry. Yep. You should see the shocks we have on this thing. And I can just play with gradient overlay again, right? It will remember my last settings. Actually, I won't use gradient overlay since I've already showed you that one. What if I do what's called a drop shadow and put a shadow underneath this cheek? And I can play with how soft it is, the colors. You've probably played with these kind of things in slideshows. This is very familiar to a lot of kind of the formatting options you have in documents. I can also play with what's called inner shadow, which will also be directional. There we go, something like that. And you just play with these different features that's too dark. And then you can actually copy that layer style. You can see those effects here. If you right click and you copy the layer style, under layer style, copy, I can apply it to another layer. Like here, then I can go right click, layer style, paste, and it will make them match. Do that to the nose as well. Just right click, layer style, paste, I'll give these shadows to everything. Layer style, paste, and to the foot. All of these, layer style, paste. And then, then I might want to move this one underneath the others. Like that. Same thing with the eye. So usually it's just simple layer style, gradients, drop shadows, these different things, they can make a big difference. And they turn it into what's called flat 2.0, which introduces a light source and a light direction. I can do it to both of these. 